Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So a while ago I was researching the cloud, specifically Microsoft Azure. It's a really interesting area with tons of potential use cases for game developers. I made a getting started video tutorial a while ago. If you don't know anything about what is the cloud, what is Azure, and you quickly want to learn the basics and follow a step-by-step -step tutorial, definitely watch that video. Basically it's a video that I wish I had when I started learning. And I also made a second video, one of my most detailed video tutorials I've ever done. It's all about how to make an online leaderboard using Azure Functions and Storage. Based on that combination of tools, using Functions and Storage, there's a bunch of really interesting cloud-based mechanics that you could build. So here let's look at 5 interesting ones that I built. All of them are based on all of the logic that I covered in that video, so this one is kind of more of a showcase than a tutorial. I just want you to see what you could build to add some interesting mechanics and make your game stand out. And for indie devs, all of this can be done pretty much within the free tier, or maybe just 1 or 2 cents per month. So when you hear cloud, don't be afraid right away thinking you need a huge budget to create all of these interesting things. Most of them are probably completely free. So we're going to look at how to make asynchronous multiplayer, where both players don't need to be online at the same time. Then how to create your own custom scene workshop, which works on all platforms. After that, look how to create the player messages like in Elden Ring or Dark Souls. Then how to create a histogram, kind of like in the Zectronics games. How to create a shared world like in Death Stranding, where a player can build something and other players can see it built. And a few more examples. Okay, so let's look at some awesome mechanics we can build using the cloud. First example is how you can add asynchronous multiplayer to your games. Now I recently covered Unity multiplayer using netcode for game objects. That tool is excellent if you want real-time multiplayer, meaning all of the players are connected and playing the game at the exact same time. But if your game is something like turn-based, so maybe something like Civilization, then perhaps you don't need a constant connection. So here is a super basic tic-tac-toe example. I've got two builds, they are not directly connected in any way, so there's no netcode involved here. Then up here I can make a move, so let's place one right down the middle. And there you go, it does synchronize to the other one. And now I can't make any more moves, so now I need to play with this player down here. So let's put a no right in there. And yep, there you go, it synchronizes, so now it's this one, so now this one do something. And now this one, play again. So yep, here as you can see I'm playing a multiplayer game without needing any direct connection. And of course a bonus benefit of not being directly connected is that, like I said, it's asynchronous. So for example in a complex game like Civilization, I could take my turn, then my opponent could go and live their life like normal, and then when they have time they can come back and they can take their own turn. Then maybe I could get notified that my opponent took a turn, so then I can take my own turn, and so on. So this is a really awesome feature for people who can't play multiplayer games non-stop, but still would like to play a game against another player. To build this kind of thing is really quite simple. You just need some place to store the game state data, which of course for that you have Azure Storage, then you need some way to run logic and update that game data, and for that you can use Azure Functions. So that's exactly what I have working here. I have this simple script, and then down here on update I'm just testing for a simple mouse input. When that happens, then over here I'm just connecting to the Azure function by doing a standard HTTP request. Over here I'm using localhost just for testing, but obviously in a final game this would be a regular URL. So this is all it does, just contacts the Azure function. Then the Azure function is running this code. Here it grabs the blob from Azure Storage, and simply takes the request and writes it onto the blob. And over here we can view the blob storage, so we can click on it to see, and then go into edit. And yep, here is all of the entire game state. It's just a simple structure holding data on each possible board position. Again, all of this is the exact same logic that I covered in the online leaderboard tutorial. It's just an Azure function interacting with some persistent storage. That's it. So when I make a move, it simply modifies the game state. Here is the game state that I'm using. It's all pretty basic. I just got an array of all of the board positions, and I got which one is the current player. So when the player clicks, really just updating that position, set the other one to be the other next turn player, just convert the whole thing into JSON and send it to the Azure function. Now obviously in this super simple demo I didn't worry about security at all, as usual when it comes to multiplayer the general rule is you really should never trust the client, whereas over here I am trusting the client, I'm just sending the entire cloud game state, and in the function I just write the exact same thing over there onto the blob, but of course in the final game you would run some kind of validation logic on the server just to prevent the client from doing some kind of illegal move. So this is the function for setting the game state, and obviously the other one is for getting the game state. Like I said, this is not a constant connection like netcode for game objects. So over here it's pretty much just based on polling. So every half a second it's going to run this function, and again it's going to contact the Azure function, 
It won't receive a response, simply use JSON to parse that response onto a cloud game state, and then simply updates it. Over here is the Azure function, which as you can see, simply reads from the blob and simply returns everything in that blob, which again, the whole thing is just this. So in the game, I can make a move, it sends the state, then the other one pulls for the update and simply gets it and sets the visual. Now, of course, one big limitation with this simple demo that I have here is there's just one game state. Of course, in a proper game, you would expand upon this to have multiple game states. You wouldn't want just one game to be available for the whole world. So there would be some kind of game manager which would manage all of the game state that exists at once. Another thing is for getting updates. So right now it just downloads the entire game state. It's not a problem in this simple demo, but if your game state is super large, maybe that could be an issue. So a simple solution for that would be when getting the game state, you only return the things that changed since the last update. So as you can see, you can build upon this simple demo in many ways. But the core of it is really simple. It's super easy to add some asynchronous multiplayer to your games, which is a really great feature to add, especially for turn-based games. For the second example, you can make your own custom Steam Workshop where players can upload and download mods. As you might know, the Steam Workshop is a really awesome Steam feature for helping you easily add modding to your game. It's basically an online database to store all of the mods that players have built and allow players to easily download any mods they want. So it's a really awesome system and works great. I've used it in almost all of my Steam games. It's great for enabling the player to use custom characters or sharing some levels. But the obvious downside is since it's called Steam Workshop, it really only works on Steam. So if your game is not on Steam, so if you're on mobile or consoles, then you cannot use that system. So there are some reasons for wanting to build your own and you can build that just using the cloud. Basically all you need is just some way of storing each mod data along with a total mod list. So here is my demo. I have my player character and I can walk around the scene. Then on the side, I can see my mod list and the mod type that I made for this game is pretty much just adding NPCs. If I click on one of these mods, it's going to download it. So I'm going to click on this one. There you go, it's downloading the mod and there you go, it downloaded and added a new NPC onto my world. Importantly, this is using the cloud. So this character over here, this sprite sheet, this is not included in the game files. And also the NPC logic, which for the NPCs, I can press a button to interact with them. So this message is also not anywhere in the base game. Instead, all of it was built by perhaps some other random player. They created, they drew on the sprite sheet, they uploaded the mod, and then I just downloaded it and automatically added it to my game. And in order to make a mod, it's also super simple. Over here on the left, I've got a basic UI. First of all, I can input the position where I want my NPCs to spawn. So let's say I want to spawn somewhere around here. So I can pause the game and see that this position is 3.4 and 2.1. So over here, let's go 3.4, 0 and 2.1. Then for the message, this is whatever I want the NPC to say. Let's say, nice to meet you. And finally, I can include a custom texture. Over here, I have some textures, so let's go with this one. And I just paste the texture name. Now here, obviously, on the simple demo, I just made this a regular text box, but obviously in a final game, you would use some buttons. Basically, we would go through the game folder, find all of the custom textures, and automatically populate the name. So now I can just go ahead, click on Upload, and it's uploading. And there you go, it was uploaded. And on the right side, my mod list was automatically updated. If I want, I can also click here in order to manually update it. Then I can click to download. And there you go, look at that, there's my awesome new custom character that was just downloaded from the mod server. And I can interact, and there you go, it does save the message that I sent. All right, awesome. How this system works is all pretty simple. Again, it's just clever usage of Azure functions and storage. Here's my storage account, and it has, as usual, a mod list.json. We can edit and see that it's really just a simple list of all of the mods. Then obviously are all of the mod individual files. So if you look at the one that we just created, here it is this one, again, a very basic structure. It's got a file name, the spawn position, then a text message for the chat bubble, and finally the spreadsheet URL. And the spreadsheet, as you can see, was also uploaded to the server. So this one is also over here in storage. There it is. Now let's see on the function side. First of all, here on the Unity side for the upload UI, when I click the upload button, it runs this code. It's basically split into two parts. So first it's going to upload just the image. So it does a put using this image that is going to run this Azure function, which is going to open up a blob with right access on the folder mods and then with the upload file name, then simply writes directly onto that file. With that done, if that succeeds, then it just generates a mod file name based on the Unix timestamp, creates a new cloud mob structure, sets the spawn position, the sprite URL, the text message, and so on. And again, there's another very simple Azure function call. Then over here for this one, simply grabs the mod list with read and write access. 
and also writes a new mod name, then over here it's all pretty basic logic. And for downloading the entire model list, again, it's pretty easy. It just gets that blob file and just returns it super simple. For unloading a specific mod, it's also very simple. Just calls the function to get the mod, which again is going to return that JSON object. Then simply use the JSON utility to convert that into a cloud mod. Then just another function in order to grab the actual texture. And finally, just spawn the NPC with all the basic things. So here is the working demo. I'm walking around my world, I'm a bit lonely, so I'm going to click on this, and there you go, it's going to download an NPC, I can go and I can interact with it. So here is a character that was created by some other players, and it was downloaded straight from the cloud. Alright, awesome! For the third example, here are the player messages like in Elden Ring or Dark Souls. So it's just like I showed in the Azure Basics video, except in this video I just refactored the code to use Azure Functions and Persistent Storage, as opposed to the Web API, which is what I used in that original video. So again, players anywhere in the world, they can write some messages, they can go somewhere right, and everyone else can download these same messages. So the other players playing their own game, they can see messages from other players without being directly connected in multiplayer with any of them. Again, it's all based on super basic Azure functions and storage. So I got a function which grabs a blob storage and grabs all of the messages that have been added by other players and simply spawns a prefab. And I myself can also spawn something, so I can press. Then over here is a nice input window that I made in a previous video. I can write my own message. So I can write my own message and press OK. And there you go, it contacts the function and then updates the pop storage, puts a message there and any player anywhere in the world can now see this brand new message. So in terms of logic, you can see how building a system like this is really super easy and it's a great way to add some player interaction to your games, even if they are mostly in single player. For the fourth example, storing leaderboards and histograms, kind of like in the very Zectronix games. In those games like Space Cam and Infinite Miner and so on, when you complete a level, you can see how you did compared to all the other players. There's a really nice histogram that shows you where you land on the distribution of all the scores, so this one is almost exactly like the leaderboard that I covered in detail. The only difference here is really you just presented that differently, so instead of a line-by-line -line leaderboard, you show a nice bar graph. So the player finishes the level and uploads their score, over here I got some nice buttons to test, so let's say I got a score between 100 and 200, so I click on it. And there you go, I got a score of 153 and gets added, and we can see over here a nice visual of the histogram. Again, the code is super simple, so click a button, generate a random number and add a score. For adding the score, just contacts the Azure function and uploads the score with a nice JSON. Then the function once again grabs the blob as read and write, simply reads the blob, adds a new score and updates a new blob. Here is the blob data, it's really just a list of all of the scores, and the other function simply gets the scores and updates the UI. So even though I'm playing in single player, I can upload my score and see how I compare to other players in the world. Once again, obviously you would add some validation since you don't want people to submit fake scores, but yep, you can see how easy it is just to add some scores, store it, and so on. For the fifth example, you could also make a mechanic kind of like the connected world in Death Stranding. If you haven't played it, basically there's a way for you to invest in building roads and bridges that other players can also use. So even though the game is single player, there's this nice connection between player worlds. As usual, all it takes is once again just a way of storing and retrieving data. So here I've got my demo, which by the way I'm using the Sinti Sci-Fi City Pack. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. So right now no one has built anything. For example, I would like to go all the way up there. But right now the only way to get up there is to go for a huge detour around this building. Or another way is I can simply build a teleporter that no one in the world has built just yet. So as the first one, I can go all the way up here and I can build a teleporter, so press a button, use resources, whatever. And there you go, it creates that nice teleporter. And now I can go, I can touch it, and there you go, it jumps me all the way up here. Once again, the home point is that it's a connected world. So in my single player game, I built this. Now if I stop playing the game, and I play again as if I were a completely different player on the other side of the world, and look at that, the teleporter is built. So thanks to some really helpful player thousands of miles away, they built this teleporter, which is now helping me in my own single player game. It would be super easy to also expand upon this to allow the players to upvote other player constructed buildings, just like in Death Stranding. So here we have another example, similar to the Dark Souls one, where we have a single player game, but with some asynchronous multiplayer mechanics. So these are the demos that I've built, but here's some more mechanics you could build. You could make a kind of auction house or trading house like in EVE Online or Diablo. Basically some place where you can say that you want to sell some goods and other players can see what you're selling. Once again, you don't need real-time multiplayer connection to do that. Again, you just need a place to source some data and interact with it. You could also make an update and patching system. So have your game connect to a server on the cloud to check if there's any updates. If so, download them and automatically patch the game. 
You can make a persistent online world, so for example an FPS like Planetside 2 where you fight some small skirmishes, and then those skirmishes have an impact on the entire world map. Once again, all you need is to store the world state and some function to run the logic to update it. Another possibility slightly related to the custom Steam workshop is you can upload assets to the cloud using Azure storage and then download them in your game. But unlike the Steam Workshop demo, what I mean is a place where only you, the developer, has access. So with that, you can add extra content to your game without having to upload a brand new build. For example, upload assets for adding some more levels, some more new weapons, or something like a Christmas event. This is exactly what Unity Cloud Content Delivery does. I actually have a lecture on how to use that in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. So if you want to learn more about that, check it out. And speaking of cloud content delivery, I should also mention that Unity themselves also have a bunch of these cloud-related services under the brand Unity Gaming Services. I covered an overview of the 30 or so tools that Unity provides, you can watch that video to see all of them. And of course there are other services like for example Firebase and Playfab. So the question is, do you want to build them all yourself or do you want to use a pre-built tool? If you build them all yourself, then you have full control to make it work exactly as you want it. Whereas with something like Unity Gaming Services, you can only interact with the pre-made tools, but they might not do exactly what you want. So it's really the same question as when using any kind of asset. Do you want to spend the time and effort making something like a 3D model, or do you just buy something from the asset store? Here for example, you can combine Azure Functions with storage to make some kind of cloud safe tool, or you can just use Unity's built-in tool. And of course, the best option of all is simply to use both. For anything that Unity already has a built-in tool, go ahead and use that. And for anything else that there is no built-in tool, go ahead, build yourself and use it with the cloud with Azure. So personally, I would not build my own cloud safe tool, I would just use Unity. However, for a custom messaging system, kind of like the Elden Ring, for that I would say build it yourself since Unity doesn't have a pre-built tool specifically for that purpose. Alright, so those are a bunch of mechanics and interesting ways you can use the cloud in your games. If you'd like to explore this area, definitely check out my video on Azure Basics. It will quickly teach you the basic terms to help you get started. And of course, check out the complete leaderboard tutorial. It's made using Azure Functions and Storage, exactly like I showed for all of these mechanics. So if you follow that tutorial, you will be able to build everything that I showed here and much more. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.